Hello and welcome to yet another Shoot Better episode. If this is your first time here, please do consider subscribing down below. We do a video like this one once a week. And in today's video, what I'm gonna do for you guys is take you sort of through my pre-match gathering information, gathering dope data on previous engagement on my rifle. Now you say, Pete, why the hell are you getting new data on a rifle that you shoot all the time? You know the data, are you crazy? Well, in today's video, we will be shooting a Z8 tips, okay? For the first time, well, I've shot a group of five. I've loaded my old 140 grain ELDM load exactly to the same length with the same amount of powder and it shoots. So that's a good thing and I just did that for the match. So I'm gonna wing it. Hopefully it shoots. If it doesn't, I'm gonna be reloading later today. So I'm gonna chronograph my rifle and get a hundred percent solid zero then I'm gonna engage the target out to distance see where I'm hitting on that target validate that my app is where it needs to be so while you guys watch the intro I'm gonna walk over to the zero range over there set up the chronograph and I'll see you on the other side come baby let's go I'm super pumped about these a tips by the way this video is not sponsored by Hornady yet. Right, so some things to note, the rifle has been cleaned as one should always do. So this first round is probably gonna sit a little bit low outside of the group and it's probably gonna sit a little bit slow. Not massively, but it will be enough to sort of throw off our SD and ES. You see we have our sheep friends coming over the hill. So we gotta get this done. Now, very importantly, before you do this step, make sure you've watched my other video on the systems check because it doesn't help you coming out to the range early. By the way, lots of times we do this the morning of the actual match. Um, just today, because I wanted to video it, I've come out the day before. Now, you want to make sure everything is 100% tight and as it should be because if it's not, you're just wasting your time. So make sure you check out that video. By the way, the stock I'm shooting in this video is the MDT XRS. This video is sponsored by MDT. Let's see what our results are down range. Okay, so the first shot is pretty much gonna be just to get the barrel onto temperature. Now, at the cost of Hornady ATIPS, I should have probably just brought some ELDMs with to get the barrel onto temperature and just to get it fouled up. But uh, that's an expensive lesson that I'm learning today, so let's go. Um, I'm gonna max out this razor, make sure, wow, it's amazing, like, I hadn't looked through the scope at all and when I put my face down I was 100% on target so that's pretty nuts. Make sure my parallax is crystal clear and uh, let's find our target. I'm thinking I'm going to engage because I'm going to shoot some loads with the 6 Creed after this so I don't want to mess up my whole target. Let's go for this bottom one on the edge. Okay. I haven't shot the single stage Bix and Andy in a while, so this will be interesting. Well, okay, 2787. Now, as far as rookie errors go, that one was pretty embarrassing. I looked for my round and I was like, where did it go? And it was high because I'd never dialed back from my previous shot. What a jump. <laughs> That's what happens when I make videos for you guys and I start packing away cameras. I just leave the rifle as is. Good thing that wasn't the first stage of a match. Okay, let's try that again.
Okay, so immediately our speed is coming back up. Okay, and our grouping is starting to close up. I'll show you guys what that grouping looks like. Now what we're gonna do, now the video is gonna be a little bit different in the sense that I'm actually not gonna shoot this chassis or stock tomorrow in the match. I'm gonna shoot something else. And I didn't have the action screws this morning to do that. So I'm gonna gather my information with this stock and the setup as it is now. But the information is not going to change. All I'll have to do once I swap out to the other stock is just quickly re-zero my rifle. Now I'm pretty happy with that and I'm going to start a new series on the lab radar and I'm actually going to shoot out to distance and then validate the information that I should have based on the ballistics. But first we're going to have to put those last two rounds. I'm probably going to take those last three, use the average of that, put it into my ballistics calculator. now. You don't need a fancy Kestrel or anything like that. Normal Sherlock will do for the purposes of this exercise. And that is an app that I use often. I'll probably just run the app tomorrow. If the wind's not crazy, I don't even bother taking out the Kestrel. So very important also, before you go out to distance, make sure you're engaging a new cleanly painted, a freshly painted plate. Because you want to see where those rounds are landing on the plate so you can make adjustments based on that. Now, very importantly, you want to make sure that you actually change this bullet, which I haven't done. So we're going to go G7 down here on Strohlock and actually change our vendor to Hornady over there. We are at 264 caliber and we're going to search for the 135 grain A tip. We're going to add that BC and we're going to change our muzzle velocity to the speed we actually got, which was 2820. And I'm just going to change that to 2820 on both. Um, save, save, and now, okay, just double check everything's right, boom, 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 cool, everything's good. And we're going to engage a plate at 510 meters, hit calculate, okay, so the app is saying we need 3.1 moles worth of adjustment to hit at 510. Now, we're not too focused on hitting the plate in terms of where it we're hitting on windage all we're worried about at this stage in time is hitting the plate in the center of the plate so that we know that our drop is correct so let's get behind the rifle and shoot some steel right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to dial on my 3.1 i'm going to just adjust the sky part a little bit to get me out there that's going to be too much that should do it just to give me enough enough elevation, uh, we're gonna pop in our mag. And for the purposes of this exercise, I'm just gonna single feed. We have a little bit of wind. I haven't measured it. I'm guessing at about six, seven kilometers an hour, sort of from five o'clock direction. So, so from behind me, sort of over this way. The plates out there. Let's see if we can hit this on the first try. So 510 meters is about 550 yards. Let's make sure our parallax is good. And for the purpose of the exercise, the wind's not enough to blow me off the plate. Right, let's see where we hit on this guy. I'm gonna hold in the middle of the plate with my actual reticle. And then what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna favor a little bit towards the right of the center of the plate for the little bit of wind we are experiencing here. Make sure my rifle is completely horizontal using my bubble level. And let's engage the sucker. Okay, so now we hit a little bit high on the plate. Our wind call was money. So I basically hit on the top between the two bolts. I'm going to show you guys that by overlaying some video on that. I can probably let go of that trigger now. Um, 
Okay, so our wind call was pretty much spot on. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to look, I'm going to hold the rifle exactly where I aimed, and I'm going to use my reticle to measure how much high did I hit. In other words, the uh, I didn't actually look at the speed. It looks like 2824, so our speed was a little bit 4 feet per second, which is no nothing at this distance. So our BC number is probably going to be a little bit better in my rifle that we hit high. So I'm going to have a look at that and go, okay, so I'm probably going to have to come up about 0 0.2 moles. So I'm going to take 0 0.2 off my dial. Okay, and I just validated that two clicks by holding where I was aiming, taking the two clicks off and watching the actual reticle step up. So let's engage the target once again. And now we should hit it slap bang in the middle and then we'll jump back over to the app and do some adjustments on there. Mm, I think there was a bad trigger pull. We sort of hit in the middle, but I didn't really concentrate there. So let's just send another one for good measure. Uh, plate swinging a little bit. Okay, we could actually add one click back. Uh, our speed was 2.810 on that one, so that's why we hit a little bit low more than likely. Last round. Okay, well, it can't get really much more in the middle of the plate than that. Okay, so we ended up needing three moles of elevation at 510 yards. Again, speed was uh, 2817 on that last round. Now, let's jump back over to that ballistic app, and I can show you guys what we need to do to get that precise. Okay, so jumping back into our Sherlock Pro, I re-looked at the lab radar and I realized my speed was actually a little bit slower on those last two so I'm going to change that to 2815 which was the average of the four rounds we just shot by the way if the audio was a little bit crappy on that last section I apologize for that I forgot to switch my microphone around okay so we're going to hit save go out hit calculate okay it's still giving us 3.1 moles so now what we want to do we want to adjust this bc number so according to um, the app when it draws the information from the database it's giving me a g7 bc of 0 0.321 now in this case we're actually going to true the bc and not true the muzzle velocity because we know the muzzle velocity is right by using our lab radar over there so we're going to hit this little function at the bottom here and we're going to go to bc now we're saying at 510 meters we needed to adjust only 3 mrad to get there it's going to actually up my bc number to 3.348 and i'm going to say use this bc and hit calculate and now that's going to say right i only need three more now to test this theory what i'm going to do is i'm going to engage a target that's a little bit closer and just validate that I'm hitting slap bang in the middle of that target. So I'm probably going to choose something at about 380 meters and uh, just put a round on that too. Okay, so let me just get distance on this target at the top there. Mm, where are you? Okay, 372. I'm going to jump into Strolock, put in my 372 as the new distance. 372. It says I need 1.8 mole. We're gonna dial 1.8 mole. Take a round, pop it in here. By the way, guys, very important. I don't know if you know this, but you don't really want to ever close your bulb and leave. Let me just focus you on my face. There we go. You don't really ever want to close your bulb and let it round sit inside there and essentially heat up because that'll change some things for you too. Right, 3B. Let me just check that that is indeed the correct target. We are shooting, we've changed our line of fire from that distance direction to this direction. So now we're dealing with more of a three o'clock wind. Again, at this distance, really doesn't do much. Um, okay, so the app said 1.9. We're, we're dialed for 1.9 and we're going to send it. Perfect.
a little bit high maybe but i mean wind call again at this distance you don't need a kestrel we're hitting a little bit high let me try and engage something even closer and validate that i should take it easy on these rounds 163 163 that's very close I just want to make sure I'm not shooting over 0.2 uh, this is a tiny little target that's only 10 centimeters big so mainly Okay, slap bang in the middle. I'm gonna call that good. Let's go 320. Let's see if that's good. That's the nice thing about having a range like this with multiple targets. You can just do what you need to do. So 2.3, 320. Center, okay. I'm gonna call that good and uh, use that for the match. So very importantly, I'm gonna head back tomorrow and just re-zero this rifle make sure my zero is a hundred percent solidly confirmed and uh, i know my data is good the bc is way higher than published in my rifle and that's just because of how the bullet deforms as it goes through your barrel so different barrels will give you different bcs now very importantly when you know your speed through the bc if you don't know your speed you can adjust the muzzle velocity but i'll redo a video on that in the near future Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different, but uh, we do shoot better videos like this once a week on Thursdays or Fridays. Make sure you are subscribed down here. Please share this video with a friend that could benefit from it. I really appreciate you watching and I will see you guys on Monday in the next video. Have a wonderful weekend and uh, let me know if this works for you, if you've got any other techniques that we need to employ that we could use to help us all shoot better. Thanks for watching. See ya. Come on, Hornady. Let's do it. Let's do it, baby. We're gonna do it. I'm so excited about the future of this channel, honestly. Anyway, thanks for watching. This is actually the end. It's the beginning of the video because we're going to the zero range. But it's the end for you. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.